Hi and welcome back to the series in processing. In this video we're going to quickly cover how we can add more balls to our program without the need to create many of these or, or, or in fact to have ball ball 2, ball 3, ball 4 and so on. So what we're going to do is we're going to create an array of balls and that's essentially just a list or, or a, a collection of of these ball objects. So what is to do is instead of doing all of this, what we're going to do is ball like so. So we simply append these square brackets after the ball or in fact you can put them here instead if you want. Uh, it, it really doesn't make a difference. And then we're going to say new ball, notice this is capital B, and then here the number of balls that you want to have in this list, or this array. But of course, normally we would have to say where the ball begins, X and Y, the speed in X and Y, and the size of the ball. So we still have to do that, um, but now the balls are going to be stored in this array as opposed to have a variable for each of them. Okay, so what we have to do is then initialize the balls in this list or this array. And in order to do that, we use what's called a for loop. So the for loop is simply a piece of code that repeats x number of times where x is a number that you decide. So it is like so. You use the keyword for, and then inside the brackets, you specify how many times the for loop is going to run. So in this case, we have 10 balls, so we, have, we want to run this 10 times. And the way you do it is you start by defining where it begins. So I'm creating a variable called i of type integer that begins at 0, and then i is less than 10, that's going to be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So 0 to 9 is 10 uh, repetitions. That's the 10 balls that we've got. And i++, plus plus, which tells us that at the end of a repetition, we're going to increase, y, uh, increase i. So what it's going to do is it's going to execute this code here, which is empty for now. And in that first execution, i is going to be 0. When it gets to the end, it's going to increase i by 1, and then it's going to run the code again, but in the second run, i is going to be 1. And then when it gets to the end, it's going to increase i again by 1, and then it's going to run the code again, but i is going to be 2. And so on until i is equal to 10, and because 10 is not less than 10, it would simply stop. So it will run this code 10 times for i is 0 to 9. Okay, and in case you were wondering, this plus plus does mean increase by one. Um, so that's uh, where that comes from. Okay, so then what we have to do is say balls, which is the list. And now here we can say zero, and zero would be the zeroth element of this list, or this array, i.e. the first element. Equals and I'm just going to copy this here. So we can say balls zero equals new ball with these details. However, if I use zero here, then I'm going to have to copy this, paste it again, say one, change these things a wee bit, and then repeat that and say two, and then change these things a bit. And obviously, this really doesn't get us anywhere and what we're going to do is we're going to initialize the balls 10 times and um, if we did this for each of the elements in the list and then we repeat that 10 times we would be initializing all of the elements in the list 10 times so that's not ideal we don't really want to do that so instead what we're going to do is instead of putting 0 1 2 3 in here instead of the 0 we're going to put i and then i is going to be first index 0, the first element of the list, and then index 1, the second element, and so on. So at 
each iteration of this loop, every time this loop runs, is going to initialize one of the balls until it's got to the end of the list and it has initialized all of the balls. Obviously, if this is going to initialize all of the balls, then we cannot give each of the ball the same value because then they will just be one on top of another and we won't be able to see them. So we don't really want to do that. Instead, what we can do is randomize these values over here. So there is a random um, method that accepts um, either one number or two numbers. So my guess would be that the two number one will give us a number between the two parameters and the first one will give us a number between the zero and the first parameter. So I'm going to aim for the second one. I'm going to remove that and there. And now what we've got here is something like uh, 50 to 400. And then I'm going to do the same for the y. For the other one I'm going to say 5 and then random 5 again and then random between 10 and 100. Okay so there's an error here but we're going to get to that in a minute. First of all let's just have a look at what I've done and why. So the first one is going to create a random float number, which is a, f a float number is just a number that has a decimal point as opposed to an integer number that is just a whole number. So it's going to create a random float between 50 and 400. The second one is going to create another random float between 50 and 400 and this is going to be the starting x position and the starting y position of the ball. So we're going to essentially be creating 10 balls in randomized locations between 50 and 400. And then we get random speed between 0 and 5 random speed between 0 and 5 for x and y, and finally a random size between 10 and 100. But obviously the ball does not accept numbers with decimal points. If we go to our ball tab, we see that the constructor, which is the method that gets called when the ball is created, only accepts integers. This means that we cannot give it numbers with a floating point. Therefore, these random methods do not work because they will return us numbers with a decimal place. So this could return 50.01, for example, and we would not be able to use that. So what we have to do instead is convert these random float numbers into random integer numbers. And the way we do that is simply by using the function of the method int. So by enclosing this random call, random method call in an int method call, this converts this into an integer. So we simply copy that, paste it here, copy this, paste it there, copy this and paste it there, and then copy this and paste it there. And now notice how the error disappears. So now we have the five integers that we would be expecting for each of the ball constructors. So all of the balls are going to be randomized and now we've got a populated list of ball objects. Then what we have to do is instead of calling display and update, sorry about that, instead of calling display and update for each of the balls, we're going to simply have to go through the balls, through the ball list or array and call display and update for them. So what this will do is it'll go through the ball array, the ball's array, and then for ball zero it will display it and update it, and then it will go into the next one, ball one, and then it will display and update it, then ball two, and so on until ball nine. So zero to nine gives us the ten balls. Okay, so let's see if that works. And as you can see, it seems to be just working fine. I have made the program slightly bigger, just so the balls have a bit more of a space uh, to them. But you can see that we've got 10 balls. And indeed, if my laptop will be so um, nice as to behave, we can increase this uh, more. 
and it does not like that, so never mind. Ah, but of course it won't like that, because that is still working. The problem with that is we have 25 balls in the list of the array, but we're only going up to 10 balls in each of the loops. So if we change this to 25, hopefully we will see more movement. And indeed, there we go. So, in order to avoid this mistake that is a very common error, what we should do instead of using 25 here is say balls, which is our list, dot length. And that will be 25. So if we change this to 30, this will be 30, and we should see even more of them come out. And it's actually quite smooth, I'm quite chuffed with that. All right, so this is how we can stop using those ball variables and instead have a list or array of balls. Both can be used interchangeably in Java, which processing is built upon. It is usually called an array, um, but lately I've been programming a lot with Python, so I'm now starting to get accustomed to calling it a list, so I really apologize about that. I keep saying list or array, but really it is an array um, in Java. So both are the same thing, but uh, it is called an array in Java, so there you go. Um, all right, so in the next video, we are going to try to make the balls collide with each other. So that should be great fun, see if we can manage that. All right, so I'll see you in the next one.